Hello. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. My name is Kavira and this is Kavira Speaks. Um, okay, so it's been a little quick minute since I posted last. Um, it's been a while since I posted last. I haven't posted in a while because I haven't been feeling very well. Um, like mentally, emotionally, um, which then turns also into physically. So, uh, today's video is on what you can do if you need and want therapy, um, but it's not available to you. It's not an option, can't afford it, uh, don't know where to start, it's not happening right now. If that's you, um, then maybe you'll find some of this stuff helpful. Um, so yeah, I've been like fairly depressed over the past few months. Um, I have a lot of things happening right now. Um, things that are like out of my control, or they feel like they're out of my control. It feels like um, life as I knew it is never gonna be the same within my own circle and like within my own family. So that is um, really heavy. It's a lot to carry. Um, and it's darker now and it's cold now. And I always feel my mood dip um, as the seasons change. Although to be honest with you, I do and I do like winter. Like my whole life, I always said I, I hate the winter time, but I don't. Like I'm outside right now. It is cold, but um, you know the cold makes you appreciative of the warmth. So I I do like the winter. But anyway, it brings on the blues. Like it just happens. Um, plus all that other stuff I have going on. So I've been dealing with some depression, and I have to help myself because no one else is gonna do it for me. Um, a lot of things have happened to me that are not my fault, uh, but I have to be the captain of the ship that's gonna get make things right again. Okay, so I'm just gonna show, share with you some of the things that are working for me um, in the hopes that maybe it um, might work for you too. So, the biggest thing of all is well, actually, I'm not going to I'm not really going to rank them like that because it's going to be different for every person. Right. Um, but a, a big component of helping yourself or as I also like to call it, building a ladder when you've fallen into a pit of despair and depression. Um, a big component of that is exercise. So I'm not someone who really enjoys um, working out. Some people do. It's crazy. I can't believe it. Um, I just never have, like I, I get very bored um, in the gym. I keep checking the clock, like how much longer do I have to be here? Um, yeah, so I, I don't love it, but I have to do it because it makes me feel better. So um, I think something that gets your heart rate up is best. Um, and I think cardio is really helpful, um, especially in the morning. So I don't know about you, but like, Pretty much every single morning I wake up with dread and anxiety and pressure and fear and uh, shame and all those awful things. Um, I feel them immediately upon waking up and I don't want to address those things so I get right on my phone. Um, but the days that I do wake up and I do take a walk or um, go rollerblading, that's something that I personally like really enjoy. Um, if I do wake up and go rollerblading, then it carries me through the rest of the day. And sometimes even a couple days after, like, uh, the, your mental pain comes out physically in your body. And uh, working your body physically also helps your mind. So um, that's really helpful. And if you're anything like me and you don't like doing it, I understand. I get it. But we have to do it anyway. If you're physically able. I mean, I know some people um, aren't able to. Um, but yeah, just, just to do a little bit. And, um, if you do exercise a little, um, reward yourself in your mind by celebrating it, like what you've just done. So, I mean, I, I can't run very far for very long. Um, but if I get out there and put, 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 and get my little run in, it sucks while I'm doing it, but then immediately after, I'll say to myself, Kabir, look what you just did. You just went for a run. I haven't been for a run in a little while. Don't let me fool you. I haven't been for a run in a little while. I should do something I actually do. 
If I go rollerblading, I need to reward myself by saying, Kabira, look what you just did. You just got up even though you don't feel good at all and you just exercised, even if it's just for a little amount of time. So that creates like a reward uh, pattern in your brain. Um, because rewards don't always have to be tangible things. Um, it doesn't have to be something you buy or eat or anything like that. It can just be giving yourself that, taking time to praise yourself in your head to build yourself up. So that's one thing, a big thing, exercise. Um, the other thing I recommend is journaling. Um, I talk about journaling all the time because I've been an avid journaler for years. I used to do it a lot more when I was younger and uh, the habit um, fell off quite a bit. And so I'm working my way back into making it um, a regular part of my life again. Um, and it can be intimidating to start journaling if you haven't before. Um, I write like I'm writing to a friend or I write like I'm writing to someone who just doesn't know anything about my day or my life and I have to explain it all to them. And that helps me get all the details out. Um, you can find your own style. It helps to have a nice liquidy pen that slides easily um, because I find that, you know, once I start writing, my, my brain just goes and goes and my hand just has to keep up. Um, but that's a great way to get your thoughts out, um, your feelings out. It's a great way to see growth, um, to see patterns. Uh, I've recently gotten a lot of clarity on some relationships I've had that were really harmful and toxic to me. And um, it's always so hard and almost impossible to see the toxicity of a relationship while you are in that relationship. And I'm not, I don't just mean romantic relationships, I mean friendships, I mean family, um, work relationships. It's sometimes hard to see the toxicness of it while you're in the middle of it. Um, so writing things down as they happen has given me a lot of clarity um, on, on some things that have happened to me. So you might find that helpful. Uh, let's see, what else can you do if therapy's not an option? You should... Oh, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, you could scream in your car. I did that today. Because I just, uh, I just worked 18 hours um, over Thanksgiving. I got paid double, which was nice. But um, I chose not to go see my family for Thanksgiving um, because I don't plan on seeing them. I just don't plan on seeing them, which was really hard and a really difficult decision to make, but one that I felt was necessary, but it doesn't make it easy. Um, so yeah, today I put on some loud music and had a good old scream cry in my car and it helped. Oh, that brings me to the third thing that you can do like for real, for real. Um, it is called verbally ventilating, AKA talking. Um, however, what's important here, it's not, it's talking, but it's not just talking. So first of all, you need to be very careful who you share this part of yourself with. So I have so many things on my heart right now that are really difficult and really heavy and I can't carry them alone, but I can't just talk to them. I can't just talk about these things to anybody because people aren't going to receive them the way that I need them to be received. And they may actually, their response might even be harmful to me because I've made a lot of um, discoveries and growth about myself recently. And if I, you know, I wanna share that with someone and I put myself out there and they then gaslight me or say that didn't happen or it's not that bad or just get over it, that's harmful, okay? So even though like, we want to share our pain with other people. Um, you have to be sure that you're, you're putting yourself out there to the right person. So my circle of people who I can verbally ventilate to would be my older siblings and my best friend. So, you know, they know, they know all my, I'm trying not to swear on this anymore. They all, my, they all, want, they know all my crap and they love me for it anyway. And a lot of the times I will just like, that's verbal diarrhea, that's what that means. Um, and they listen. And a lot of times, like if I, if I need advice, then I'll preface it with like, hey, I'm looking for advice. Otherwise, they just listen. Um, and that's really helpful. But however, not everyone has those um, relationships. Not everyone has those people in their life. And if you are feeling alone, and like there's no one you can talk to, 
Um, another thing that you can do is go on to like online forums and communities. So this may or may not surprise you, but I'm actually an avid Redditor. Um, I love Reddit and Reddit has been very helpful for me um, in my current um, mental health recovery journey. So I belong to several different groups, um, all dealing with like my particular pain and trauma that I've experienced. Um, so for example, like narcissistic family abuse, that's what's, that's the big thing that's like exploding my life right now. Um, or the realization that I suffered from narcissistic family abuse. Um, so belonging to those communities, talking to people who were scapegoated in ch as children like I was, who have bad relationships with their family, who are estranged from their family, uh, people who've been through it, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, wrote a book about it. These people are all on those communities um, and it's just been so validating to me to know that I'm not, um, not alone. I'm not overreacting, I'm not crazy. Um, and that the things that have happened to me have also happened to other people. And, and they've survived and they have, a, you know, words of wisdom and advice and resources. So, um, and that's just one particular thing. I, I was in a, I was also sexually assaulted when I was in college. So I belonged to uh, the subreddit that talks about rape for a while, but that one was like, it's hard to be, it's hard to be a member of. So, you know, you know what you can take or what you can um, hear or read or whatever. So it is easy to overwhelm yourself with it. Um, but yeah, that, that's, an, that's an option. And the other thing I would say that you can do um, if therapy's not an option for you is read. Um, so there's plenty of books out there um, from a therapeutic standpoint that are really helpful. Um, if you don't want to read, actually, I have some audiobooks that I'm listening to right now, which um, are great. Because, like, I don't know, I'm a big reader, but I'd rather sit down and read a fiction book. But when it comes to, like, nonfiction, I'd rather listen to it while I'm, like, on a walk or cleaning the house or something. Um, two birds, one stone. But I'm going to put a list of some recommendations for you in the link below, in the comments below. I love when you YouTubers do that. Um, I'm going to drop some resources for you down below and um, you can check those out. Um, the one that has literally like changed my life is, uh, what's it called? I should, can't say it changed my life and not know what it's called. Um, it's by Scott Walker. Basically like the, the handbook on CPTSD. Um, and I'm going to be talking a lot about CPTSD from here on out because it's, the knowing about it is, um, really going to be half the battle for me because I never knew I had it. But that's going to be a video for the, uh, another day. But anyway, so he has a book. He has a couple that I really, really liked. So I'll give you the um, titles of those. And then finally, the other thing that I recommend, if you're not a book person or audiobooks, you can also turn to YouTube videos. Um, so my favorite one right now is Therapy in a Nutshell. She's awesome. Um, just like really straightforward. And this also has the added benefit of like, even though it's a, what's it called? A parasocial relationship. Even though they're through a screen and I don't know her and she doesn't know me, she speaks with such um, like kindness and warmth and matter of factness. The same, the same that you would probably be getting from a therapist, um, IRL in real life, as they say. Um, so that's been helpful for me too. Like she's taught me some different techniques when I'm feeling really anxious, how to um, actually calm my body down and just like things you can do for yourself. Like I said, I'm the only one who's gonna help me. Like I have to, I have to be in control of this and I, I'm just so tired of feeling so bad all the time. Like I, how long is it gonna last? How long is it gonna be like this? I feel like I have so much potential and I got this huge ass brain and this huge ass heart and I just want to lay in my bed all day and it's I'm really holding myself back or my pain and my trauma is holding me back so I'm ready to feel better um, so I'm trying to do some of those things that I mentioned um, 
exercise, audio books, YouTube videos, online communities, reaching out to my siblings and my best friend. Um, yeah. So I actually did, I had been off Lexapro for a while. I don't know why I keep doing that. Doesn't work, Kabira. You need it. You need it. If you need it, you need it, okay? So there's no shame in that. So back on it. It's, I'm on like week three now. I'm feeling noticeably better already. I would really love to be in therapy, but, you know, money. Um, so, yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm trying to help myself. Hopefully some of this might be a little bit helpful for someone else. Um, if you have any other advice for our other friends out there, um, like ways you can therapize yourself without money or insurance then i would love to hear them um and our other friends would love to too uh, well that's really all i had to say so i'll catch up with you soon thanks for listening and um, take care